Hello, Merry Christmas, welcome to another Vlogmas video. Today, we're gonna to be doing another unhaul video. <laughs> So this is going to be a pre-Christmas unhaul video. Now I know I've done a few of these this year and really maybe I should have just done one big unhaul, but there are still books that I'm looking at and I'm like, I don't know why I still own this book. I don't think I'm ever gonna get to it. And I think that maybe it's just better to remove it from my shelves entirely. So I'm gonna be doing that one more time for the year. <laughs> I'm gonna be attempting to be ruthless, but the point of this video is to enter into the new year having unhauled some more books, freeing up a bit of shelf space if I were to get any books for Christmas, because usually I do tend to receive books for Christmas. It's one of my favorite gifts, books and plants, best gifts. So I'm gonna be taking you along on a little unhaul vlog. I haven't put my Christmas decorations up yet and I figure this was the best time to film this because my Christmas tree will go, it will go over there and it will completely block those shelves. So basically anything I want off the bottom of those shelves is gonna be really difficult. So we're just gonna to head to those before I pop the Christmas tree up and then I can actually reach the bottom shelf because they're just inaccessible when the tree is there. And they're pretty inaccessible now. I mean, they're not, I could just move a basket out of the way, but they're my shelves I look at the least, I think, because everything blocks them. Therefore, there's probably a lot of stuff on them I could unhaul if I was strict. So let's prep for Christmas. Let's prep for New Year and just clear out some of those books that I still don't think I'll read. And yes, I know, I know this is my fourth unhaul of the year and I should have just done one big 100 book unhaul <laughs> because I think I've done like 30 each time. So Let's see how this goes. Also, I feel like the reason I do so many unhauls is because I've been collecting books since I was a child. A lot of these are books that I've had for quite a long time. Some of them might have been books that I've been sent many, many years ago and have read and don't really feel the need to keep. Or some of them might have just been books that I was sent unsolicited. So I've just kind of had them around and haven't really intended to ever read them. Just generally, it's a mix of things. Obviously, some and a lot of books I've bought myself as well. But yeah, I just feel like my reading tastes changed quite a lot and particularly recently have changed quite a lot. So let's refresh that with an unhaul and let's let's tackle these bottom shelves first. Gonna move this out the way. Right, what do we even have here anymore? Every time I come down here, I question whether I wanna get rid of any of these books. Like some of them are down here because they literally won't fit on other shelves. Like these ones, these were over there, but I moved them here because I, wanted them all to be the same height and not that they are and in fact that's just a dip in the middle there anyway so these ones are pretty safe but they're just over here because there's no space in them anywhere else so haha <laughs> okay i think that this is a really random book that i have and maybe i might get rid of that one or at least move the location of that one i don't think i need that one anymore these are bloody brilliant so good don't get enough love the family tree and beauty by sherry s tepper i've had these for ages like they are very old editions but they are both fantastic fantasies these are my old grimm's fairy tales and alice's adventures in wonderland so they're not going anywhere these two i honestly don't think i've got any interest in reading so i'm going to pop that on the maybe pile i think i've talked about potentially getting rid of those ones before but they're there these ones are all safe I, i'm gonna put that one on the maybe pile as well now i have quite a few copies of defy the night i have oh i don't know where it is where are you i've got a finished copy i don't know where that is but I've also got this, which is the general proof copy. And I've also got this one, which is a personalized proof. So obviously that one, I think I will hold on to, but maybe this one I don't need anymore because that is just the standard proof. Then we've got Game of Thrones, which I reluctantly keep on holding on to and I don't really know why, and I'm gonna continue to. And then we've got some small classics. And then we have this stack. So we have a couple of my King books on the bottom of this stack. I have read it. I haven't read Sleeping Beauties yet. I haven't read The Bazaar of Bad Dreams. And to be honest, I don't know if I will read that one. That one's short stories and I don't tend to lean towards short stories as much. I've got The Tales of the Unexpected by Roald Dahl, which I have because I studied it at school. And then actually all of these up until the Memoirs of a Geisha book, I studied at school. And I think that's the reason I keep hold of them because actually, no, I didn't study these two at school. <laughs> I studied The Bloody Chamber, but I didn't study horror stories or The Women in Black. But I did study these ones. Um, I think I'm keeping hold of them for like literally sentimentality reasons and I don't really know why. So maybe I hear it of a couple of those. Hang on, let me, let me put the camera down and pull some out. Okay, so from that stack I've literally just picked off two. I've picked off The Tales of the Unexpected by Roald Dahl and I've also picked off Bizarre Bad Dreams by Stephen King. I just don't really think I'm ever gonna get to these two. 
but there's a whole other shelf above that I feel like I could probably pull a couple more off. There's loads of taller ones that don't fit in other places I've put here, and I honestly forget that I've got them, which is silly because they're books I really want to read, so I think I might try and rejig the shelves a little bit to put those somewhere a little bit more accessible. These are the ones I'm talking about. This is How to lo You Lose the Time War and The Vine Witch and The Strange Case of the Alchemist Daughter. They're three that I want to read and I forget I've got because they're here and this is kind of blocked by stuff. So I'm actually gonna pull them out a little bit to remind myself to move the position of them. So along here, we then enter into some of my arcs and I think I could probably get rid of a couple of these, hang on. Okay, so when I have issues with arcs is a lot of these are books I've got at Yalk and one of them, for example, The Fandom by Anna Day is actually signed and personalized and that makes me feel guilty for getting rid of it or like I don't want to get rid of it. And also I don't know the right way to get rid of that because obviously it's personalized to me, but I hadn't read the book at this stage and then I read it and ended up really enjoying it, but I think if I read it now I wouldn't really enjoy it. I think this is the kind of book that I was I was bordering on not quite being the right age for. I don't normally think there's an age restriction on books, but this did read a lot younger. And I think I enjoyed it because it was set at the Olympia, which is where Yalk is set. Yalk is a young adult literature convention in the UK. And yeah, I think there was various different reasons I enjoyed it for that reason, but I don't think I would enjoy it now. And I do have finished copies of this, so I don't know if I need both. What I might do is I might bring this one back to my family home because I am moving some of my books back there that I'm not really that bothered by as much anymore but don't quite want to get rid of yet because I have a book trolley and I wanted to fill that book trolley so it'll look pretty. So I might bring this back and put that on the book trolley. The other one I selected, which again, I might do the same thing with is Moxie. I've watched the film for this and I thought after I watched the film that I would read the book. But again, I'm just not that bothered by this. I think I have reached a point where I am getting a lot pickier with the YA that I read and if it's more school-based contemporary YA I find that a lot less relatable as a 26 year old woman who has not been in school for a while <laughs> so yeah I think this one maybe I might put on that sh those shelves as well and because there are arcs that makes me feel a little bit less guilty I might do that with Defy the Night as well. Okay we're at the higher level now which is often the level I find trickier to convince myself to get rid of the books because this is more of the books that I look at a bit more regularly, although I'm looking at one now and I'm like, I think you can go. Maybe it won't be as hard as I thought. I have pulled one off already that I think I'm gonna bring back to my family home with me and not actually properly get rid of. This is Vicious by V.E. Schwab. So I have a lot of V.E. Schwab's books in hardback now, which means that the paperbacks are just duplicates for me and I don't really like this cover too much. However, the reason I'm not fully getting rid of this one is it's personally signed and there's a bit of a story behind that and that V.E. Schwab signed that for me in Bristol, Forbidden Planet, many, many years ago on the Vicious tour. It was when I was doing my YouTube channel the first time around and she did a little segment for my YouTube channel and we just chatted about writing and we stayed later and spoke just the two of us and it was just so nice and I have such lovely memories of that that I hold sentimental attachment to this book so I don't think this is one I will permanently get rid of but I think I can bring this to my family home. Now the rest of them are all below Funkos which means if I start pulling them out we're gonna be playing a game of Jenga but Let's give this a go. Okay, so I've pulled out Marissa Meyer's Heartless. I don't know anything about this other than the fact that it is a Alice in Wonderland retelling, and I bought this because I really enjoyed the Lunar Chronicles series, which is honestly what I'm thinking of getting rid of, but I can't quite bring myself to do it yet. But I don't think I'm gonna read this one. And again, I am getting pickier with my YA. I'm just not quite leaning towards YA as much as I used to. So I think this one I can safely get rid of. Okay, so I'm looking at this top shelf. Hang on, I'll show you as well. So this is the top shelf. And I think we're fairly safe with the rest of these. As I said, we've got the Lunar Chronicles, which I am considering getting rid of, but I think I'll keep those for a little longer. I do have The Bear and the Nightingale by Catherine Arden, which I have the hardback for the other book. And it bugs me that I have different books for those. And I don't know if it's a series I'll ever read. So there is that, but yeah, I think I'm happy with how that is at the moment and this shelf as well. I think I can leave that as is. I, the name of the wind I always go back to because obviously that series isn't completed yet and that's the one that everyone's like, will it ever be completed? I haven't even read the first one, but we'll keep that for now. Okay, these shelves. I'm always so unsure with these ones. Okay, all right, let's look at the top. Right, so these two, I don't know why I'm still holding on to these. I read the first one, loved it. And then I, did I read the second one? I either read or DNF the second one. I hated the second one. I think I finished it. So I don't know why I'm still holding on to these. <laughs> I don't even think I like the cover. Um, I'm gonna put, mm, I'm gonna slide them back in for now. And I'll think about that one. We've also got Everless, which I think I was gonna unhaul before and then I changed my mind. Let's have a look at that. See, I just don't think I'm ever gonna read this. Do you know what? I'm gonna get rid of that one as well, I think. 
Okay, so far so good. This shelf is pretty safe because they're all my rainbow ones. They're not safe because they're rainbow, like they're there because I like them. Although actually this, what's this about? Is this something I'm ever gonna read? I think this was in a book subscription box ages ago. What's it even about? I'm really trying to be picky because when am I ever gonna read these? So I think I'm gonna get rid of that one as well, which came in a book subscription box a couple of years ago, I think. So that's going, that is Storm and Fury by Jennifer L. Armantrout. Down here we're pretty safe because now we've got like my books about books here and then like other miscellaneous here that's not going anywhere. Got my classic shelf that I think is good. My graphic novel shelf is also good. Okay, I think down here I've got like a new arrangement that I did a couple of weeks back or last month because this is my horror section. So we're good there as well. I've just noticed there's loads of room down here I didn't even know about, hang on. There would appear to be like a massive gap down here that I didn't know I had, so I could have been filling that. This is my shelf that I literally never see because it's covered by cushions normally, like like this. So yeah, these are kind of, this. see this is where I have the fandom, the finished books. Again, I don't know if I actually really need those finished ones. Are they signed? I bet they're signed. And then we've got these up here. I'm gonna see if those are signed. I'm probably gonna, gonna regret trying to get those out. Okay, so this one, The Fandom Rising, which is the second one, this is not signed. I haven't read that one. The first one is, oh, it fell. The first one is signed and personally signed. It says, Beth, lovely to meet you in person. And that makes me feel bad to get rid of it. I will keep these two for now. I bet you these will be in the next on haul video you see, but I will keep them for now. I don't really know why I still got the Hunger Games trilogy, but I think, again, that's a sentimentality thing, so. We'll keep all of those. Pretty sure I say this every time, but there is no point in me unhauling off these shelves because I know there's not gonna be anything that I wanna remove. The only thing I would vaguely think about is the hardback of The House in the Cerulean Sea because I've now got the Illuma Crate editions, but I really enjoyed that book, so it doesn't bother me too much to have two editions, but mm, maybe I'll get rid of that one in the future. Well, there's my hardback of Defy the Night I was looking for earlier. There we go. Yeah, I think most of these are good. This is my attempt at a bottom shelf rainbow shelf. And then we've got my paperbacks here, which again, pretty sure are okay, but it's in my bedroom that I think I'm gonna find a few more to unhaul. Okay, in my bedroom now. Here we are with my rainbow shelves. I'm definitely sure that some of these can go. So let's have a look. So I have a load of Judy Bloom books that I bought because I was trying to write for that age group, except it was actually a bit younger I was trying to write for. Judy Bloom is very much like bordering on teen. Whereas I think I was trying to write a teeny weeny bit younger than that. So I have a load of her books. They're really pretty actually, they're rainbow books, but I just don't think I need them. Where are they all? Okay, so those are the books. Oh wait, there's one more, here we go. Now they do look very pretty. I got these from the works. The only one I'm considering keeping is Deanie because this follows a main character who has scoliosis and I have scoliosis. So I am tempted to keep that one. I don't know if maybe these ones will just be like removed from my shelves and maybe I'll keep them in a box somewhere because if I do want to go back for the initial reason I bought them, even if they are a little teeny weeny bit older than the age I was writing for, I, I know that Judy Bloom did quite a lot for young tweens at the age of writing these books. I think I might have read Are You There God It's Me Margaret? Is that one? Yeah. I think I read this one when I was younger which is about a girl entering into puberty but yeah I don't, I don't, don't think I need them anymore. Okay, what else have we got? What have we got? There's books that I've read and I just don't think I'm ever gonna read again, but at the same time, I don't really feel the urge to remove them from my shelves. There's just a couple of contemporaries. I think I've read these and I don't really think I'm gonna wanna pick them back up again, but they are still here. <laughs> so a couple of books that I'm thinking, will I ever read you again? We have The Graces, which I'll just pull out a little bit. Graces, which I didn't really enjoy the ending of. I'm pretty sure this is a signed copy again. Girls of Paper and Fire, which I read this year for a video and I didn't really enjoy it all that much, so I, I don't know if I'm ever gonna read that again, so we'll pull that one out. The Anna and the French Kiss series, I feel like I'm never gonna pick that back up, but I do kind of like the way they look, the spines and the aesthetic of it. Frankly in Love is actually the arc and I do wish I had the finished copy for that because I don't really love the arc very much. But I don't know if that's a reason enough to get rid of it. I did enjoy that one. Um... <laughs> ha! I think... Uh, do you know what? I thought there'd be more on here that I would unhaul. I think because I don't come in here as often, it's like I don't really look at them enough to make an opinion on them almost. But yeah, these are, I think, stayers? Maybe? Okay, so one that I think I can get rid of or at least maybe move to my family home is Patrick Ness's A Monster Calls. This is illustrated by Jim Kay and it's also signed by the author, but I think it's also signed by Jim Kay. Yeah, it's signed by the author and the illustrator. But honestly, I don't think I'm ever gonna reread this. It's a beautiful emotional story, but 
I don't necessarily love the illustration style and it's also a very dark story and I don't think it's one that I will ever want to reread but yeah I, I might get rid of this one. So if I just pull out the ones that I pulled out just then we have The Graces by Laura Eve. I'm pretty sure this one's personally signed as well. Yeah I've still even got my little post-it note in it from queuing. I remember being desperate to finish this one by the time of meeting the author and I just, I didn't love the ending. So that one I think can go. I think I will get rid of this one because whilst I did enjoy this book, I really don't like that cover and I don't really like the colors either on that. So that one is gonna go purely based on aesthetic reasons, which makes me feel bad, but someone else will read it and get pleasure out of it. And I really enjoyed the story. So then someone else can really enjoy the story. Oh, I've actually just seen another one. Oh no, I've seen a couple. Hang on, wait. Okay, right. So we've got Jenny Colgan's The Bookshop on the Shore. This is actually, part of a series and I didn't realize this. So I think I'm gonna get rid of this one or at least bring this one to my family home. I seem to just be default bringing them all to my family home, but yeah, that's what's happening with that one. And I've also just spotted The Upside of Unrequited by Becky Alpatali. Have I read this? I genuinely don't know, but I don't think I need a copy of this anymore. I'm trying to get rid of the ones that I just don't think I need to hold on to for any reason. I'm not gonna reread it. I'm not gonna use it in photos. I don't need it. The Marie Kondo of Does It Bring You Joy? is kind of when I'm thinking about this. I'm just looking as I talk just to see if there's any other ones. Side note, not that I'm unhauling this, but this book does not get enough love. Empress of All Seasons by Miko Jean. This was so cool. There was like season competitions that the main character had to go through to be able to then be crowned Empress. And she is so badass and the competitions are just so cool. This one doesn't get enough love. So yeah, obviously keeping this, but just mentioning it quickly. Okay, can I get rid of any more? Can I even carry on? I don't have the other books in this series and they've actually recovered them anyway. Possibly. I'm gonna put that in the maybe pile. I did enjoy it kind of, but yeah, it, it was okay. All right, what else have we got? Anything else? Do you know it's such a weird addition on my shelves and every time I see it, I'm like, what are you even about? It's Everyday Angel by V. Schwab. This is, is this her, no, this isn't her first book because that was near which this is three books in one i just don't think i'm ever going to read this i love v schwab's writing and i love the fact that i have a real schwab collection on my shelves but this one what's it even about aria is a guardian angel she can use her shadow like a door to travel from place to place she can draw things into existence and she can see when certain people need help she must find and guide three different girls through each of their problems to earn her wings. Oh, I don't think I'm ever gonna read this. When was this released? 2014 initially. I really don't think I'm ever gonna read this one. Oh, this has actually been fairly successful in this bedroom. The light is now coming in all over the bookshelf. So that looks quite pretty. Look at that. Pretty. Okay, I think, I think we're done. I think we're done in here. I've left gaps that I need to fill, but that's that was the point. Okay, it's a fair few books, but I'm managing to carry them somehow with one hand. How many books have I unhauled in total right now? Just briefly looking at the books in here, I think I unhauled a couple of these recently, which is why there's some gaps. So I think I'm fairly happy with what I have in here. Again, I, I don't know if I need the paperbacks for these, but they are signed and I, I had a brilliant time at the event for the promotion for these, but I have the hardbacks. So I don't know if I need them both. And then these are all kind of my contemporary-ish non-fantasy based hardbacks. And then down here, we've just kind of got miscellaneous and non-fiction. And then we've got my feminist stuff, which is staying, my historical, well, non-fiction stuff. And then yeah, more stuff up there. I've just picked off these two. So this is one that I was sent um, as part of an event that was happening with a couple of books. And this was one of the ones that I got sent as part of a big promotional package with a load of other books, but I just don't think I'm ever gonna read it. And then this one is actually one I worked on a promotion with recently, but they accidentally sent me two books and it's absolutely stunning. And I, I don't need two copies. So I'm gonna give one of them away. So someone else can have that one. I keep coming back to these shelves because I've, I think I've got like 27 books and it'd be cool if it was 30. Do you know what I do keep going back to is this series because I have the hard back of Shadow and Bone and I assume they're going to do the hardbacks in these two as well and I would rather have the hardbacks than the paperbacks but at the same time I don't want to get rid of them until I have the hardbacks so I'm kind of umming and ahhing there. Also my prior of the orange paperback I don't really need a paperback of that as well. Again that's something I was sent as part of something that was like a collaboration with a company. Yeah I don't think I really need the prior of the orange tree paperback to be honest I have the hardback and I've got the arc so Maybe that can go. Okay, yeah, that's going. So that I think brings us up to 28 books. I think these are all good to stay. This one is one that I think maybe one day I will sell because I think this one is signed, is it? Hang on. It's a book plate. So that's the Waterstones promotion one, I think. 
And that is the Lee Bardugo Wonder Woman Warbringer. Yeah, I don't think I'm ever going to read that, but I don't think I'm quite at the point of selling it yet. Yeah, I think... are we good? I think we're good. I think we'll leave it, I think, at 28 books. Okay, there's a mess of books there. The sun is shining in my face, so I've had to put you at a weird angle. Let's just quickly go over what I'm unhauling. Some of these, as I said, are gonna go back to my family home, so I'm not like officially completely removing them, but I am just taking them out of my flat. Some of them will go to charity shops. I don't know if I'll sell any of them, I don't know. But by the time this video is live, I will have probably got rid of them by now. So I know that a couple of people sometimes do say in the comments if I still have hold of them, but I probably will not. So I'm very sorry about that, but let's go through what I'm getting rid of. So we have Vicious by V.E. Schwab. We have Heartless by Marissa Meyer. We have Something I Said by Ben Bailey Smith. We have The Opposite of Butterfly Hunting by Ivana Lynch. This one is a duplicate. We have Carry On by Rainbow Rowell. We have The Upside of Unrequited by Becky Albertalli. Jenny Colgan's The Bookshop on the Shore. Moxie by, who's that by? Jennifer Matthew, Matthew. We also have Stephen King's Bizarre Bad Dreams. The Judy Bloom box set of multiple different titles. Everyday Angel by V.E. Schwab. A Monster Calls by Patrick Ness. The Pro of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon. Everless by Sarah Holland. Frankly in Love by David Yoon and The Graces by Law Eve. The Fandom by Anna Day and Jennifer L. Armachat's Storm and Fury. Roald Dahl, The Tales of the Unexpected and Defy the Night, This Is the Art. The Dreamer by E.J. Mello. The Surface Breaks by Louise O'Neill. State of Sorrow by Melinda Salisbury and Unfiltered by Lily Collins. Okay, that's all the books I'm getting rid of. I didn't count how many that was, hang on. Okay, it's 28 books, so that's fairly decent. That's cleared up my space quite well, I think. As I said, I probably should have just done one big unhaul quite a few months ago and just done it all in one go because I'm causing myself many more trips to a charity shop at this stage. But yeah, that's my unhaul. Hope you've enjoyed it. Hope you're enjoying Vlogmas so far as well. If you have enjoyed this video, please do give it a thumbs up. Comment down below what books you think you need to unhaul soon, maybe, or if you've read any of these, what your thoughts were. I'm sorry if I'm getting rid of some of your favourites, but just a little bit of Christmas space clearing fun and just freshening up for the new year. And yeah, you can also subscribe to see more of my face on your feed. Hit the little bell icon if you want to be notified of more of my Vlogmas videos. And you can find my Patreon link down below too, where I post even more content. Thank you so much for watching. Keep smiling and stay positive.